My job is to investigate, to, con to receive the complaint, investigate, and make a recommendation as to whether I think the code has been breached. It's to the, up to the committee to decide if it agrees with me. As a sovereign House of Commons, it keeps the final decision within the Palace of Westminster instead of trying to subcontract it out to someone else. So I think we got the balance right. And no one has a greater interest in policing the code, setting high standards of conduct for members of parliament than members of parliament. So we have a well, the self-interest. The electorate yes. may have. The committee uh, formally is an advisory committee to the Prime Minister. So effectively, you make the recommendations and then the government decides whether to implement them or not. Yes. At the moment, um, the ministerial code is promulgated by the Prime Minister and he it is, advised by the Cabinet Secretary, who decides whether or not there's been a breach of the code. So the team captain also gets to be the referee. Nice. This whole thing of sort of self-regulation of Parliament, it, it occurs to me that it doesn't really work out if, if one party decides not to play ball and becomes shameless. I think self-regulation of Parliament is by and large a myth uh, and it's, uh, it's subsumed into uh, the, the power of Parliament, if you like, who holds the power. I mean, the real world is that the Prime Minister, in the end, the buck stops with you. I mean, that's the top job and that's how it should be. The problem there is that the judgment is made effectively by the Prime Minister. Whoever uh, owns, holds the power um, will determine, you know, whatever outcome they want. And if they don't want accountability, there will be no accountability. That's just the harsh reality. Quis custodiet ipsos custodes? Uh, who guards the guards is the real question that we ha have to ask ourselves now.